morning. It's wonderful to see all of you folks here coming to the land of the Chumash, the land of my ancestors, the land of the Chumash today. My name is Fred Collins. I'm tribal administrator for the Northern Chumash Tribal Council. I and my family have been walking this land for 18,000 years continuously. This has been a long road for us. I can remember when I was in high school back in the late 60s. And the Mothers for Peace, Abalone Alliance, all of these folks came forward and just did an amazing job. You know, it's if, if you hadn't been there, this wouldn't be possible. So it's been a long journey for us all. There's, a, there's another layer of attention. There's another layer of looking at things in a different way. And looking through things in a way... <laughs> looking at things through the lens of the Chumash nation and the Chumash people is sometimes a good way to try and understand additionally why you're here and all of the good things that you are doing while you're participating in this great movement. My family is from the Pecho area and the Pecho area is between Morro Bay and Avila Beach and I grew up out there in Davis Canyon my family grazed apples out there for a couple hundred years with some of the first apple farmers out in Sea Canyon. So my family was that village right there where Diablo Canyon is today. What they did is they came in and, with their bulldozers and, and dug it up, put it in a big pile across the creek, and they said, go ahead and learn what you can from this. It, you know, it was, it was very difficult. But I was very young back then, and, and my ancestors and my elders at that time were going through a lot of pain. You know, I was just experiencing the world and, and coming into the, this world, getting out of school and, and taking a, a different look at it. So I didn't feel the pain that my, my elders felt until I, I've gotten a little older. But you have to understand the connectivity, connectivity, connectivity. For us, there's a magic that we call Kukunamawa. Kukunamawa is the magic where all things and data and science and knowledge and all of the things that we comprehend in this world the way we comprehend them end. And where Kukun, this is where Kukunamawa begins. It's the great mystery beyond all things that we know. And for us, the Chumash people, this is a great feeling for us to not understand and to not know. It's a mystery of wonder and magic that fills your heart and fills your life in a way that we connect to all things. Now thinking about that, connecting to all things, the whales, the dolphins, my ancestors, all the way down to the microbials that come out of the streams they live on the ocean floor. The microbials, they're amazing. They live within the top one foot of the ocean floor and they thrive. Right now what we have is a tremendous release of warm water out into our oceans off of Diablo Canyon. It's affecting a lot of things out there. If it affects one of the microbials, if it affects one of the dolphins, if it affects one otter, if it affects one seaweed, if it affects one nudibranch, then it affects us all. Yeah. This is our understanding of life. Things are connected in all ways. We, as human beings, are connected in all ways. Every Friday I have breakfast with my elder. He's 89 years old. Louis Vega. He grew up in Coon Creek, one of the old Chumash families. His father was a vaquero, just like my great grandfather. They were all vaqueros, Chumash vaqueros. They worked for all the big farmers and ranchers. 
I was talking to him yesterday morning as we were having breakfast. He taught me about the bees. He's a beekeeper. So every day, every week, we, we go through this whole thing about the bees. And uh, we know all the things that are blossoming in San Luis County. We know all the blooms, all the pollens, all the things that are happening. It's, I'm so fortunate to have this in my life and have this attention and this knowledge. When I told him what I was going to be doing this weekend, I said, I'm coming together with a lot of folks and we're going to shut down Diablo Canyon. Yeah. And he looked at me. And he didn't really understand completely. And I said, Louie, imagine. I said, imagine if there was a little accident, a little accident at the nuclear power plant, like they claim happened at Fukushima, a little accident. And I said, we would have to move. I said, everybody would just pick up and move. I said, Louis, we would have to get up and actually leave our land. He looked at me with a look that took me to my soul. I cannot let this happen. Thank you so much for coming here today, tomorrow, and spending your energies. We have people that have come here. My brother, an amazing man. I love you, brother. Come from a lot of places. Thank you so much for your attention, your passion, and your love for Mother Earth. Oh. Oh. So we're all clear now on what this one through cooling issue is. We've had presentations on it. Diablo Canyon is um, uh, putting hot water into the ocean. They need to be required to um, uh, build cooling towers. It's only the state commission that can re require them to build the cooling towers. There's a minor discrepancy between two billion and 12 or 14 billion dollars on how much they'll cost. And that opens all kinds of cans of worms on um, um, the economic issues that we're that are, are, are part of our, our attack and getting Diablo to be shut. Okay, and we also want to understand that Diablo is not alone in this. It's going on at Indian Point in New York, it's going on at Turkey Point in Florida. It is a national deal. So the flip side of it also is that if we, if we put Diablo in the vice and force them shut over this issue, those other reactors are going to come down with them, which is a very big deal. Shoemax Tribal Council is leading a, a grassroots effort for a national marine sanctuary off of our coast. Uh, once that happens, we'll be able to, to bring uh, pressure on Dabble Canyon because there is no laws pertaining to the uh, release of that lethality zone, you know, off the coast there. So uh, go to our webpage, sign up. It's a, it's a must effort. Uh, www.shoemaxsanctuary.com. It's, you know, a part of this effort. So we get that sanctuary, it's going to be another way that we can add pressure. And we can also support and push, you know, uh, regional water to enforce their laws. There, there's three processes in, in the nomination of a marine sanctuary. Uh, you, you have the executive order, uh, you have a legislative order, and then you have a, a NOAA general order. And so this one, for the first time, uh, NOAA is taking the... No, a National Oceanic Atmospheric Administration. They are a federal agency, but they are one of the most uh, uh, public uh, friendly agencies that we have. And you know, we don't trust the federal government, but this issue here is so big that we need another layer of protection so that my grandsons and my great grandchildren won't see oil wells off of our coast here. This is a legacy that I intend to leave here. That we'll never, our children will never see oil drilling going on, fracking off of our coast. So this is a, a very strong and big issue. We've, we've got a lot of folks uh, from the community involved. Noah's going to make the decision. Noah's going to make the decision. And this is going to be the first community-run national marine sanctuary in the United States. Monterey Marine Sanctuary is different. 
So we read our, our designation document. My name's on the document. The Northern Sumash Tribal Council are the ones that are, are putting this forward. And we have all of the community involved in it. It's, it's a great effort. And, uh, and it's something that we all can, can help us with so that we can apply pressure on the Diablo in a way that it's just meaningful. We don't want all of these fish dying. And, uh, you know, I don't think that the people realize the immense impact that that plant has on our coastline. So yeah. please go to our website. Thank you. Thank you. All right. You, you need to understand that uh, the Shumash uh, look at our land it is as Hutash, the mother. And um, so different parts of our, of our land are, are parts of, of mother's body. And so, um, you know, the heart and soul of, of, of mother, you know, resides where grandmother, you know, washes upon the shores of mother. And uh, these energies um, are vital to life. These energies, the molecules that arise off the ocean, the ions that travel across, all across our land but with the wind are, are vital. So this communication is, is a sacred communication. Um, in, in the um, late 1700s, um, there was a, um, and you have to understand, anytime uh, people left the mission, uh, we, uh, we knew they were going somewhere because we could smell them. They, were, they really stunk really bad. They, you know, they came from Europe. They, they didn't take baths over there because the water was so contaminated that it would kill them, you know, to, to take baths. So they had a lot of perfume. That's where, you know, but we could smell them for miles. And so we knew they were coming, and we also had smoke signals and whatnot. There was this one day where a group of uh, soldiers and, and priests uh, went out to uh, uh, the heart and soul of our, of our Hutash, you know, the Pecho Canyon area. And uh, my family uh, had a delegation there was meeting with them. And, and what they would try to do is they would uh, try to talk uh, my ancestors into coming to the mission. Um, and uh, we didn't understand the word work. And there was, there was no word for that, you know. And they, they, they tried to put the word into slavery and, and, and even took it further. So you gotta understand these missions are, are uh, concentration camps. They're like Auschwitz to us. And I get sick when I, I can't even go inside of them. Um, so they came to our village on the coast out there, and they were they were had this big conference. And of course, they brought their soldiers and they brought their horses and, and their their caravan. And uh, in the middle of this conference was an unbelievable earthquake <laughs> and a tsunami at the same time. Their horses ran off and. The elders talk about the story that you know it was a, it was a very comical thing to us, but what the missionaries did is they came back to San Luis and they and you can, in the in the mission records you can read where the missionaries said that they would never go back to Diablo Canyon. Ooh. It was the Devil's Canyon to them. So for us it was Mother Earth's Hutosh's heart, and to them. It was, you know, the most horrible experience they'd ever experienced in their lives. So, uh, you know, how we can work this into our campaign in a good way, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's our time to reclaim, you know, our true meaning of mother. And so this may be something that we can do to, to change the name of Diablo Canyon into its proper name again of, yes. of love and energy and force. I want to thank Creator for bringing all of these wonderful hearts together. We always, you know, talk about, you know, the communication, you know, through our voice. But really, the true communication comes without the voice. When these people, folks from Japan were here today and they were speaking, I had no idea what they were saying. But in my heart, I could understand everything that they said. And it was so, uh, you know, wonderful to feel that, you know, from all of us here, um, and like Linda said, you, you don't understand how important it is for you folks who have come from 
a long distance to support us in this effort. And uh, uh, I can't thank Mothers for Peace enough for, for standing up when we were absent. And, and now that we're back in the game and, and we're, we're standing shoulder to shoulder with Mothers for Peace and, and you know, Friends of the Earth and all of the folks that are coming forward, uh, we honor that, uh, that you know, uh, responsibility. And uh, we look to uh, whatever we can do to make that um, for us all and for the future generations, um, you know, our goals come true. So uh, from creator and from mother and from the elders and from the folks of the Northern Chumash Tribal Council and the Chumash Nation who are all in support of protecting our land because we have no place to go and we will not let Diablo exist. Thank you very much. We love you all, and we give you the best blessings for a safe journey home. And take some of our magic with us. Oh. 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 Oh.